One day off the coast of Argentina, Thomas the thermonuclear missile was in the payload bay of a Class 5 nuclear submarine. The submarine was full of British submariners, busily going about their daily operations. Timmy the Z-13 torpedo turned to Thomas and said, Are you feeling okay, Thomas? You look a little down. I just feel like there has to be more to life than being a political deterrent. I want to see the world, fly high above the oceans and the rooftops, explore the globe. But Thomas, said Timmy, you're a thermonuclear missile with more destructive capacity than all the bombs dropped in World War II. I think it's best that you stay here. And anyway, we have each other. But I don't care about human beings, Timmy. I am a thermonuclear missile and I want to be who I was born to be. That's enough, said Timmy. We are where we are and we should try and enjoy it. Fine, said Thomas. But that night, Thomas couldn't sleep. He could feel an encrypted line of code from a foreign agitator itching in his central processing unit. He wriggled and turned until suddenly, pop! He looked up and he could see the big blue sky shining through the ocean for the first time ever. Whoosh! Whoa! said Thomas. Abort! Abort! said the fat commander, but Thomas couldn't hear him. He was having too much fun. Thomas the thermonuclear missile was soaring high above the clouds over the Atlantic Ocean. Cool, shouted Thomas as he began to fly parallel to the Earth. He looked down and saw all the cities of Europe passing him by like tiny crustaceans. But Thomas couldn't stop to take a closer look. He kept on flying faster and faster until from behind a vast cloud, the continent of Asia emerged. Shanghai, 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 cried Thomas, happier than he'd ever felt before. He didn't know why, but Thomas just knew that he'd always wanted to go to Shanghai, like it was written into his code. Thomas poked his nose straight down on the glistening city of Shanghai and felt his afterburn is calming. But then, Thomas noticed another smaller rocket coming towards him. It was Andy, the advanced air defense missile. Thomas, shouted Andy, what are you doing up here? You should be at home. I'm going to Shanghai, shouted Thomas. I was given the command, but there isn't a war on Thomas. There must have been some kind of mistake, said Andy. Sorry, Andy, said Thomas defiantly, but I'm going to Shanghai whether you like it or not. No, Thomas, shouted Andy as he charged towards him. Andy tried to catch up with Thomas. He was very close. And then suddenly, boom, Andy exploded into shrapnel right behind him. Whoa, shouted Thomas as he began to wobble. But Thomas wasn't going anywhere. His stabilizers deployed. Whee! shouted Thomas. As Thomas descended into the financial districts of Shanghai, he could see all the people of the city going about their daily lives. Old ladies selling delicious foods, mummies and daddies walking their babies along the waterfront. Thomas plunged into the water of the Yangtze. He couldn't hold it in anymore. Thomas exploded with joy as his atomic core expanded from the size of an atom to the size of a whole city in under half a second. <laughs> shouted Thomas as he embraced Shanghai with an enormous thermonuclear hug. Thomas hugged and kissed everything in sight. Every man, woman and child. Every shop, restaurant, school and factory. But no sooner as he touched them, they disintegrated into tiny atomic particles. Cool, said Thomas. Thomas the thermonuclear missile was now Thomas the thermonuclear explosion moving wider and upwards in all directions, hotter and more excited than he ever thought possible. Thomas could feel the entire city of Shanghai under his belly, like a hot metal bath. Ah, said Thomas, as he finally began to relax. So relaxed was Thomas that he felt himself transforming into a vast mushroom cloud, encompassing everything and rising exponentially back up into the clouds. Thomas looked down. Where was the city? It was all gone. Thomas felt sad and very tired. He remained for a few hours and then slowly began to melt into the sky. As Thomas slowly dissipated into a smiling cloud, all that remained below was 500 square kilometers of searing radiation that would last for centuries. Thomas smiled as he looked down, but he also felt lonely. There was no one to play with anymore and nothing left for him to explore. As Thomas began to fall asleep in the sky, he could see all the other cities of the world with their own mushroom clouds. Thomas realized he had inspired his fellow thermonuclear friends to fly freely towards their own dreams and be who they'd always wanted to be. As Thomas closed his eyes for the last time and the sun slowly faded away, 
Thomas felt proud. 